What's up, I'm Baden with Q102KQRA, Springfield, Missouri. Every year at Rocklahoma, I try to do something a little bit different. It usually involves some kind of art or uh, something like that. This year, I had the artist paint their favorite song to play. So you might be asking, what are you gonna do with the paintings? No, I'm not gonna sell them. No, they're not for sale. See, my whole motive behind this thing is the fact that there are a lot of people that don't get to go to rock shows. I mean, they're down on their luck, you know, either that or they have disabilities. One thing or another prevents them from going to see their favorite shows. That sucks. So what I like to do is create an opportunity to bring the show to them by offering uh, some people that are down on their luck maybe a piece of art made by their favorite band. Are they the best art pieces? No, not by any means. They play music. They're not painters. Although some of these paintings are actually pretty damn good. And it's always fun for the artist to do something other than answer the same like five questions all the time. So here it is, enjoy. I'm doing a special kind of interview and, uh, and I like to exploit an artist for everything the word artist means. And today we're gonna figure out how well you can paint. Oh my God, see my daughter would be so good at this. She'd be going, yeah. Let's make your daughter proud today. And All right. granted, I know that just because you're artist doesn't mean you're artists, but that's half the fun. What's the, what's the name of the game here? Please? All right, so what I want you to do is paint your visual representation of your favorite song to play on stage. Oh my God. I know. This just got massive, man. I know. It's actually kind of an easy one. I got this. Yeah. He's on it already. <laughs> Secrets don't make friends. <laughs> what, do any of you paint? I used to in school. Yeah? A long, long time ago. I have done. Yeah, I have I painted, painted before. Recently. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You know, a roller. This is a little, di di little bit different than a roller. First of all, are you any sort of like painter or? Oh God, no. No, I, I am literally the worst handwriting in the world. I'm are terrible. you left-handed? I am. I have met so many left-handed <laughs> musicians. Like me too. <laughs> like, and that's sweet. The world's against us. You hey, know man. it. How and we doing? write like doctors. Yeah. Yeah. My God, dude. Scissors it's, suck. It's bad, but I'll try. I'll just talk nice and calm, and we'll put some colors over here. Yeah, it's a happy trees. <laughs> He loves the color pink, so as long as you got that. Yes. <laughs> He's doing it right now. He started before it even began. Yeah. He just saw paint. He actually weaseled his way up here. He's like, uh, Bob Ross. Okay. Bob Ross. So, Bob Ross. Corey, what song is this? Drum solo. Dr he doesn't even like doing the drum solo. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Three songs on my head right now. Let me, right. let me just get down to two. Um, so, the song that we chose, I pretty much telepathically, we were both thinking the same song. It's a song called Hunting Season. It's off our first EP. It's really about the way that culture, well, globally, but specifically for us in America, um, with uh, authority in people of color or subjugated or um, underserved communities, we have a, a large fear of authority. We have a large fear of those that we believe are there to, are, or are supposed to feel as though they're there to protect us. And I think that there's this idea and a really, really um, strong sense of dissonance between the uh, underserved and uh, underprivileged areas and um, different authoritative services. Uh, I've been enjoying live. However, it's pretty dark. Of the newest album, correct? Correct. Pretty dark, has an internal struggle. We really want to just put ourselves out there and it was kind of like therapy for us. Yeah. We talk about each other and the issues and the struggles with addiction and, and depression and all those things. Right. And that's something relatable to everyone else too, and that's yeah. and that's the cool thing also about how you guys write because it's relatable to everybody. You're saying, "Hey, we've been there too. This is our story. You know, maybe yeah. it can help you." And yes. we're kind of trying to reach out to make people feel better about exactly in that way. So, what what what's this song about? The song's about that magical sort of feeling that that you get, and I'm sure for, for everyone, everyone has something in their life that gives them that that feeling of just wow, you know? Yeah. Something. Can't catch like lightning in a bottle almost. And for us, it's uh, it's it's performing on, on stage. You know? um, I, I think it's about having two sides to yourself. Okay. So like you know the light side, the dark side, and finding the balance between the two. It's uh, pretty much about you know don't talk shit. You get hit. Pretty classic metal story. Yeah, now I can go crazy. So just, yeah, yeah, oh, totally. Splatter it on there, cry yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's here on there. It's gonna be an emotional picture. 
Is Buck Cherry covering Nine Inch Nails? Interesting. Interesting choice. <laughs> Go over here. You look like you're concentrating very hard on I'm this. Concentrating very hard. I love watching your intensity right now. I can't see what's going on. I don't know what song you're painting. I'm doing. I'm trying to make a rock hand. This guy's been going to town. All right, I'm trying to. I'm trying to make it look cool, dude. Got to make a little yellow brick road right here. He's nailing it right now. You can't see what's happening, but I can see the intensity. I don't know if it's the makeup yeah. or whatever. It looks like the most filled up painting of today. Use emotions. all the stage. Oh yes. yes, that's emotion. I think I snorted paint just now. Am I getting high? Snorted paint. Any water? I'm legit interested right now. Oh, sh oh yes! You can't get to where you're going if you don't know where you've been. Maybe you shouldn't ask directions from someone who's never been where you're going. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. You need some like mood music, like. <laughs> it's a giant. Everybody. Yeah, everybody wants to draw a penis. Uh, you ever been backstage in the venue of Pussy Hops? Yeah, yeah, everywhere. What's the first thing you want to do when you get off stage? Draw a big dick. Yeah. Art is perfect the way it is. Let's pull this out here and look at this. It's pretty insane, right? Oh, damn. <laughs> for, no, for no reason. <laughs> damn, bro, chill. That's that is what that is what Steve would say. Yeah, He'd be like, "Damn, bro." My exact words. And let me see. Oh man, that's sweet. All right, what song is it? Monsters. Monsters. That's okay. A self portrait of myself with all the monsters inside. Yes, that is gorgeous, man. Walk on home, boy. Oh. See that? We got legs. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have time to draw the rest of the boy, and he's walking. That's his home, cause. Yeah, he fucked up. I like so the, the I like the yellow road though. Yeah, the road of dreams. Yeah, it's like the yellow brick road, but yeah. it li it literally just leads to a fake wizard and a bunch of disappointment. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's a sick light bulb. All right, so. I ain't doing it a pumpkin. <laughs> Wait, is it? I don't even know anymore. Okay, what's? Oh yeah. Oh shit. I'm like, I'm like I do this to my kids all the time. I'm like, oh, that's a great cat. Dad, it's a dad. It's an alien. It's a sp Oh, it's a fantastic cat spaceship. <laughs> wow. Actually, that's a fucking genius. What do you call it? I'm a fucking genius. <laughs>